let's see, we have okay. Uh, let's see, come on. Dr. Henry, can you yeah. explain one more time? One of the things I'm having trouble with is when to say like sodium two chloride or whatever, instead of like, um, you know, sodium chloride, chlorite or whatever, like okay. when to use the Roman numerals instead of when to not use them. So the Roman numerals are used, well, let, let's talk about when you don't use them. That's easy. So if your metal is in group one or in group two, or if your metal is aluminum, right? You're not gonna use a Roman numeral, okay? So you do not use a Roman numeral, right? For sodium, for uh, calcium, because they're in group one and group two. Transitional metals, transitional metals in most cases, 99% of the time or 90% of the time I should say, you're going to use a Roman numeral because you need to let me know what the charge is on it. The Roman numeral represents the charge on group the three through 12? on that metal. What was that? That's group three. three through 12? Yes. And then also you have what we call post-transitional metals and your metalloids. So your metalloids can be, they're also flexible because they can be metals. They could act as a metal or they act, can act as a non-metal. But when they act as a metal, they act kind of like the transitional metals because where they're located. So they can lose a lot of electrons, right? So depending on who they're pairing up with. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically group three through 12 and then the transitional metals is most likely when I'm going to use Roman numerals. That is correct. The transitional metal doesn't mean I'll use it all the time, depending on how many electrons it's. Well, no, no, because there's certain metals that are, let's say, a large percentage of the time, they're always gonna be a certain charge. Like for instance, silver, if you if it's just written silver chloride, you know that that silver is plus one, right? right? The only time that you'll ever use a Roman numeral for silver, if it's something other than plus one. Okay, I see what okay. you're saying. And so, and sometimes you'll get zinc, right? Zinc, zinc is almost, most of the time it's plus two, right? The only time that it isn't plus two is when you tell me it's not plus two, when it's plus four or plus six. Okay? How come it's so not then, true for everything in that group? Like, why is it true for silver? Why is it true for zinc? But it's not true for cadmium or copper? Um, because they're like, so for instance, copper. Copper is a really good example. So you could have copper two, you could have copper four, you could have copper six. So because the possibility of having those different coppers are a high frequency, right. so, you know, higher than the others, you know, so like, for instance, when you have silver, most of the time, I'm going to say like 90% of the time, it's going to be silver one, right. but only 10% of the time is going to be some other silver all looped up together. So it's easier for us to sit there and say, oh, silver. Really what happened was, was that some chemists got lazy early on. And they just noticed that it was always silver one, silver one, silver one, silver one. So they just said silver. And then on the rare occasion that it's silver two or silver three, then they have to sit there and put the Roman. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. But that's a good question. And, and I will discuss some of the, the exceptions. But I always tell everyone it's better to put the Roman numeral there than not to put the Roman numeral in terms of the transitional metals. Now, for, for sodium and stuff like that, you know that you shouldn't put a Roman numeral because they're always going to be that charge. They're always going to be, sodium is always going to be plus one, right? Lithium is always going to be plus one. Potassium okay? is also a plus one, right? Potassium is also a plus one, yes. Okay. Okay, so does that make sense? 
Yeah, kind of. And the secret is, and I tell this to all students and they, they just, they like to ignore me. The secret is, is not to overthink it. It's real simple, you know, and it, it all makes, it, it makes a little sense. It's kind of logical. Oh yeah, plus one, okay. So then I know that if it's plus one and I'm working with something that's minus three, so I need three of those, right? It's just simple, simple math. Don't overthink it. And we well, have a tendency of overthinking. Another one I'm struggling with is when to use the suffixes like I'd, aid, eight, eight. Okay. Anytime that you see the word eight, A-T-E, that means, it means almost 90% of the time, 99% of the time that it has an oxygen in it, right? Okay. There are exceptions, right? One of the exceptions is Thiocyanate. So thiocyanate has sulfur instead of an oxygen. Okay. So they replace that oxygen with the sulfur. Okay. Okay. Um, anytime that it has ITE, that also means it has an oxygen. Anytime that you see something like either an A or an I, TE, that means it's what it's called, what we call an oxy anion, right? Meaning it has oxygen. It's an anion that has oxygen. And you know that it's a, a, um, a polyatomic ion, okay? IDE, IDE goes on anything that, that doesn't, well, I should say, anything at the end of a compound, first off, so for instance, sodium chloride, right? So that's the end of the compound. It lets us know that it's the end of the compound and it goes on non-metals, okay? So it also lets us know that when we're talking about uh, covalent bonds, it lets us know that that's the end of the compound, okay? And uh, in a covalent bond, everything is a non-metal. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then, sorry to ask so many questions, but um determining the charge of the compound can we go over that one more time so i know we're trying to do how many electrons away it is from being like a noble gas right or being balanced but if you have something that's like um i guess if it says like four parentheses two i guess i'm just having a trouble adding up the electrons or subtracting the electrons okay so let, let's see let's see what we can do we'll, we'll we'll start with some examples maybe that's what we'll do and then I'll give you guys, see how much you guys. Okay, so let's say we had sodium and we're gonna be reacting it with chlorate. What is the chemical formula for chlorate? ClO3. ClO3, what's the charge? Minus, just one. Minus. Okay, so if we have sodium that's going to be reacting with chlorate, what is going to be the charge on the sodium? One plus one. Okay, so how many of those am I going to need to balance out the chlorate? One. One. So then my chemical formula is going to be. Wait, wait, wait. I'm confused about, you said what's the chemical symbol for chlorine? Chlorate. Chemical formula for chlorate. Oh, chlorate. Chlorate, yes. Oh, okay. So can you deter can you tell me how we got that? It's chlorine and an oxygen. Okay. So that's these are your oxy anions, right? Right. Okay. So that ATE lets me know that it's has oxygen in it. Right. I know from my experience that it has three oxygens in it because I learned to memorize the the polyatomic ion table, which is given to you there, is it not? Right. And it's also available for you guys to use on, a, on an exam, is it not? I have it printed out, but I'm just... Yeah, okay. So, as soon as I hear the word chlorate, A-T-E, right? That means I'll go look it up on my polyatomic ion table. And I know that chlorate, if you look at Nate, look at chlorate, you can say,
What was the question? I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. If you look at on your polyatomic ion table, what is it for chlorate? Oh, what is I, the chemical formula. I don't have it in front of me right now. It's in my desk. <laughs> is that going to help you? I know. Can you have Anytime it? Anytime you guys come to class, the things that you guys should have, you should have your periodic table and you should have, you should have that whole little packet that's in there. Give me my folder. I, in the I desk. would always have it with me because, you know, a good chemist comes prepared, right? You have a periodic table posted on your wall right where you're at all the time, right? Because you guys are constantly sitting at the same spot, right? Right. And if not, you have a portable one. Somebody has a, I have a, one of my students used to put it in their wallet and they had a mini one. Yeah, but Dr. Henry, I'm not trying to be a good chemist. I'm trying to be a mad chemist. That means that you can do a little bit more. So you need a bigger, a bigger <laughs> wallet, you know? Okay. Uh, yeah. Or I just need to breathe in a lot of mercury, right? I want to avoid that part. All right, let's see. Periodic electronegativity. So you want to look at common polyatomic ions. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to find, oh, here it is. Okay, I got it. I got it. Chlorine, okay. ClO3 minus. Okay, ClO3 minus. Now, we know that sodium is plus one. We know that chlorate is minus one. How many of each do I need? Sodium is plus one. Chlorate is minus one. Yep. Uh, how many do you need to like make it zero? That's correct, because that's the goal. At the end of the day, it is to make it zero unless we say we say sodium chlorate ion. And they'd have to give you their charge associated with that. So right? you would go uh, one, right? That's right. So we we need one of each, right? So then we'd write it as ClO3. And that would be my answer for sodium chlorate. So sodium chlorate, okay. Okay. So let's say we're gonna do one that's really hard. Um, ammonium. Hydrogen. Phosphate. Ammonium hydrogen phosphate. Uh, hydrogen phosphate is, so it's NH4 plus for ammonium and okay. HPO42 minus for hydrogen phosphate. So you need a, uh, what, like two ammoniums and then, so what is? That is correct. And so it would be NH. Uh, would it be NH2HPO4? Is that how okay. you would put it? So it would be, let me write this down so that everybody knows what page we're on since you're, you talk faster than I write, so. I'm just trying to beat the lag, you know what I mean? That's if good. I, if I spit it all out quick enough, then it won't lag. NH42. Oops. HPO4. Is that correct? That is correct. NH2. All right, so we did it, but <laughs> now I got to understand why. So we basically that two minus in order to balance it to zero, we added it back to that four plus. Is that correct? Okay, so now say that again. It really feels like on doing the homework and looking at this right now, it really uh -huh. feels like you just take the charge on the second element and then flip it and put it on the first element. That is essentially it, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's called cross multiplying, right? So a lot of people recognize it as being cross multiplying because then all you do is, since it this has one, you just go, okay, so this guy needs two of those and this guy needs one and it works out perfect, right? Right, so if it was like six and three or like seven and 10, 
you could do the yeah. same thing exactly all right but yeah. you've got to change the charge right like from negative to positive no so if it's negative it's always going to be because down here you can't have a negative number right 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 okay i see what you're saying okay yeah. all right okay so okay, let's do another one mm, let's do Wait, wait, wait. I want to make it hard. Okay. Copper four. Let's see. Copper. So you want us to write the formula for this? Yes, ma'am. Carbonate pentahydrate. Uh, I can't help you. It's not on my sheet. Are you sure? Car carbonate is. Okay, so then start off with what it is. Carbonate. So what does carbonate look like? CO3 2 minus. And let's see. And what's the charge on it? You said 2 minus? Yeah. Okay, sorry. And then um, pentahydrate. So I could look for hydrate and just add five, right? So hydrate, and this is the thing that we talked about in the lab. That's just H2O, right? It's just H2O. And penta means what? Five. Five. So that means that we have five waters that we're working with. Right. Okay. So, and then copper. What is that? Uh, C CU. Okay. And what is the charge on this copper? Uh, let me look at my periodic table real quick. Do you need to look at your periodic table? Is it one? Nope. Four? Oh, copper four. Oh, it's right there. That's right. That's right, Brianna. Four. So we know that this is four plus. Okay. So then how many of these guys am I going to need? Two. Okay, so the chemical formula should be what? For the copper chlorine, uh, carbonate. Then I'll show you to, how to do it with the hydrate. For copper carbonate, it would be Cu, would it be Cu4 parenthesis 2? Or do we take that 4 out of there? Okay, did we ever put any of the other charges in there? I don't understand the question. <laughs> did we ever put any of the other charges in the formula? I know you said the same question again, but I still don't understand it. And did you no. see me do? Did you see me do anything with this in our formula, in the final formula that we wrote? No, no, I didn't. So I know that I can use what I know about carbonate. We know that carbonate is always going to be a minus two. So how many of those am I going to need? Two. So you could just do two. Pu two. Okay. So then I have carbonate. And my subscript should be two. Two. And then I put a big old dot, five. a fat dot. Five H2. Five H2O. So why the dot? Are they separate compounds? So what it is, yeah, really they are. All it is is that that compound is 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 being you're basically adding water because when you're working with certain chemicals, certain chemicals are really, really hard to dissolve. And so what a chemist will do, they'll put in so many waters to make it a little bit easier for it to dissolve, right? And so if you already have a little bit of water there, it makes it really easy for it to dissolve. Otherwise, it takes forever to dissolve certain things. You have to put a lot of heat and stuff like that. And you'll be there, like for instance, I was making a compound for, for uh, my 1B class uh, last semester. And um, I started it, and then I put it on the the uh, on a burner uh, on a burner for like about two and a half hours. 
when I came back, it still wasn't resolved. Dang, right? that was a long class, huh? Oh yeah. Hey, so in this instance, why did you put why didn't you put the two after the copper? Like we did on the last one. Because how what is the charge on the copper? Four plus. Four plus, right? It's four plus. How many of the carbonates do I need? Two. Okay. So I need two carbonates to balance out the copper. I don't need two because in this case, doesn't that equal four minus? Right. If I have two carbonates. Right. So on the last example, you needed two of the first compound or the first. Uh, That's correct. Yeah. All right. It's coming yeah. together. So, so does that make sense? So at the end of the day, remember, you want it to equal zero. When you're working with ionic compounds, it has to equal zero. Right. right. I think my first electron just jumped the synaptic gap real quick. So it's coming together right now. One out of the next million, I need to understand it. Okay, so when we're talking about covalent bonds, right, or covalent compounds, these guys, we just use the, the Greek prefixes the name of the element, and then we make sure that the, the very last name of the element is turned to I, okay? So like this guy would be what? Dihydrogen or dihydri? No, dihydrogen. Oh, dihydrogen. Because di remember, the I only goes on the end of the compound. Oh, it right. It never goes in the middle. It never goes in the beginning. It's always at the end. Dihydrogen, penta, what's C, calcium? Carbon. Carbon, yeah, duh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you don't know carbon by the end of the semester, that's an automatic <laughs> F. Just hey, so you I know. Told you, I only have one electron pass, okay? I got <laughs> other ones are coming along. And then... Um, oxide. Yeah, oxide. Okay, good job. <laughs> okay, simple. I have the same question like Michael in the chat, Dr. Henry. Um, when we're dealing with not the covalent ones, but the ones with the transitional metals, when there's ionic no ionic compound, element, well, yes, the, the ionic compound, how do we figure out if there's no Roman numeral? Like, how do we figure out what kind of charges? Because, okay, like, in so, our homeworks, like, it, when you got it wrong, it would say this, like, two, four, six. And it's like, how, how do we know that? Okay. So, again, you have to look who it's pairing up with. Right? If it's pairing up with fluoride, right, then we know that, excuse me, then we know that the Roman numeral, well, it depends on what we're, we're talking about. Okay, so for instance, let's go. Uh, can I erase this right now? Everybody got this part? Just one question, Dr. Henry. What was that? Just one question. Is, is it supposed to be monoxide or only just oxide? monoxide or it could be oxide either one is acceptable okay thank you so you'll see in some cases like for instance we call carbon monoxide we don't say monocarbon mon monoxide okay but you can you can get away with using either one okay so let me let me try to address your question so let's say we had uh Okay, so if I have this guy, what would be the name? And what would be the Roman numeral? Well, see, going from this to the other way, I think it's easier because the Roman numeral should be three, right? That is correct, yes. So I think it's easier to see it this way, but when it's the actual word, I feel like it's, I don't know, it seems But they hard. give you the Roman numeral if it's the actual word. Yeah, but... 
like I can't think off the top, but there was one, for example, that had like vanadium and the Roman numeral that they gave you was not what was actually at the end of the, you know, parentheses. Molly Bidinium. Molly Bidinium. Well, this one works out because we know that. Okay, let me give you another one. I'll give you a couple of these. And then I want you to figure it out. Oh, ClO3. That's a chlor chlorate. Is it molybdenum 3 chlorate? How do you say that? Moly molybdenum, yes. It will oh. be molybdenum. Is it molybdenum 3 chlorate? Because molybdenum is a transition metal. Mm -hmm. And ClO3 is chlorate. That is correct. Even though I misspelled molybdenum. Whoever named these was tripping. Molybdenum. Right? It's like BDN. I, I, you're not supposed to put that many consonants together. It's like molybdenum. <laughs> okay, so molybdenum three, four, eight. What about the next one? Yo, four. What is that? Uh, phosphate. Um, molybdenum two phosphate. Two phosphate. Nope. Because remember, it's the charge on the molybdenum. What is going to be the charge on the molybdenum? What is phosphate? What is the charge on phosphate? Four. Phosphate is three okay. minus. Three minus. Okay. So if phosphate is three minus, and I have two of them, so what is the charge of the molybdenum? Two. It would be six. It would be six. Man, I'm dumb. I'm so dumb. <laughs> yeah, Nate, you just want the charges to equal zero. So whatever one side equals, you just have to counter it on the other side. Ah, oh, you explain it so simple, but you know when you're as dumb as me, <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, I don't understand it. Okay, so it's based on charge, right? So what I always say is break it down, right? Break it down to the simplest parts. We know that phosphate is PO or three minus, right? Okay? How do we know that? Because it's on the sheet. Because it's on the sheet. Okay. So we know that phosphate is PO4 three minus. We have two phosphates. Oh, and three minus plus each three. of them are three minus. So then if I only have one of these, right? Because there's no subscript here. That means I have one, right? So what is the charge on the molybdenum to balance out that out? Balance that out. Uh, oh, six. It would be a six. So that's why we put a six. So that means that this has to be plus six. Can you uh, reset my homework? <laughs> you, I need a reset. So does that make sense? That did make sense. Okay. That's all it is. At the end of the day, you just want to make sure that it's balanced out. It doesn't tell you, like, this doesn't tell you how many, you know, the charge on that. You have to pay attention to the charge on the molecule that it's pairing up. So depending on who it pairs up with and how many of them are there, that's going to be the charge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Brittany? Yo, Come can on. Can we vote Edgar out of the class? Because he already has this stuff no memorized. We're going to vote him off the no, island. No, you want to keep him in the class because it's not based on a curve. Edgar doesn't need this class, man. Just pass him already. Yeah, I'll take the free pass. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's let's see. We'll do one more. And then uh, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so.
Write it. Write it. Write it down. I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn something. It's not working. Okay. PM. Let's see. So this one. So with this one, we go back to our Greeks. Yeah, because it's not in the transitional metals, right? Are you sure? Because remember, the stuff that's anything that's in that middle section. I can't find PM. I don't know where it's at. 61. Uh, oh. Clock. Yeah, that's a transition metal then. It's considered, I mean, it's a specialized transitional metal, but these are your, your Latinoid, right? So they also need the Roman numeral associated. So PM is. Probably that is incorrect, Edgar. Yeah, it has to have uh, it has to have Roman numerals because it's in the <laughs> position metal. <laughs> so there, see, that's why you didn't get that free pass. If you'd have gotten it right, then Edgar, you could have had it. You know, I was thinking about it. Edgar probably did that on purpose to make us feel better. That's what it was. That is incorrect, Edgar. You gotta close it, Edgar. Oxide. That's right. You gotta close it. It's an oxide. Uh, oxide is for covalence. No, the I goes with both. It it just it helps us define the N. It is the negative ion in the case of ionic bonds, and it's also it can be the negative ion in the case of ions, and it also lets us know that that's the end of the compound. Right. All right. Third time's the charm. Oxide. Boom. Got it. So Brittany, uh, Brianna, no, that's incorrect because we don't use the Roman numeral for ionic compounds. I mean, not Roman numeral. We, we use the Roman numeral for ionic compounds. We don't use the Greek prefix. I just got super confused. On this is promethium three oxide. It is promethium three oxide. That is correct. Can you explain to me how we balance the electron charges on that one? Okay. So tell me, what is the charge of uh, what is the charge of oxygen? Negative two. Uh, let me look at my sheet. Negative two. For the sake of time, I'm going to say negative two. Negative two, because we know that we it it's only two away from being a noble gas. So the only way that it's going to be an ion, it's going to be a noble gas. So we know that that's going to have a negative two charge. Oh, and okay. there's three of them. So and there's three of them. Okay, and I know that I have two of these guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what would be the charge on each one of those? Positive uh, three. So each one of those have to be a positive three. 3 plus 3 that's 6 2 plus 2 plus 2 or say 2 minus 2 minus 2 that's minus 6 so 6 minus 6 does that equal 0 is this yeah. a trick question yes. okay what was that Nate I said this sounds like a trick question no um so then, okay, continue on. Okay, excellent. So are you feeling confident? Dr. Henry, I have a question. Yep. So the reason why, the reason why it's three oxide, is it because of the, the, uh, the three oxygen? Is that what it is? Or is it because of the charge of, uh, of PM? Okay, it isn't. 
three ox. So this here, this here represents the charge on the mobidi. I mean, on the Promethean. Right? Bless you. So we know that that has a three plus charge. So this always means that we're talking about the charge on that metal. Okay. So this goes with this guy. Right. Three. And then, and you're right. It, it deals with the fact that we have three oxygen, right? So one, two, three. If I had two oxygens, the charge on that metal is going to be different, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Is it oxide because, so is it just one oxygen molecule or is there two? How many oxygen molecules do we see here? We see three right there. That's right. That's how many oxygen molecules, that's how many oxygens are in that compound. Okay. Right. So there's two promidium and there's three oxygens, right? So again, I gave you this, right? And you have to give me the name. And if you're given the name, you have to give me the compound. Well, you know that you know that oxygen always has the same charge. The oxide is always going to have the same charge. What's going to be the charge of the oxygen? Oxide is always going to have the same charge. It's negative six, right? Can we do one more, please? Okay, oxide, just one ox, because when you, you want to take, you want to take a look at the charge on a single oxygen. Oxygen oh, is a negative six. Two, right? negative two. Negative two, it's always going to be negative two. Those that are in group, group 16 is always going to be negative two, right? Okay. Pretty much all of them except the one that, that kind of breaks that rule is palladium. Because it's actually a metal. Can we do 109 more examples that I choose? <laughs> Are you talking about the homework? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let, let's let's try one more. One more for the row. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, so OS. Uh, OS. O S is that O five or O S? That's O S. O S. Okay. Let me look it up. Osmium. Okay. C for carbon. Osmium five, carbonate. Carbonate? Carbonite. Carbonate. Carbonite? Are you sure? <laughs> I'm, gonna spell, I'm gonna write it down the way you said it. No, don't do that yet. Edgar, help me. Carbonate. <laughs> are reserved for polyatomics with oxygen. Oh yeah. Uh, it would, I suppose it would be carbide. Carbide. Osmium four. No, it's osmium five because we got to cross cancel. It is osmium five. What is V? Five. No, I was talking. I was responding to the chat. Oh. Osmium five carbide. So, th so remember, there's no this number right here. That lets me know how many osmiums that are. It doesn't tell me the Roman numeral. The charge tells me the Roman numeral. So if I have four osmiums, I'm going to put a question mark. It's a question mark. Okay. 
What is the charge on carbon? It would be four minus. Four minus. And I have five of those. Oops. My head hurts. <laughs> it's too early. Five of them, right? So let's add that up. 20. Minus 20. Okay, I have one, two, three, four. So four times what? Will equal 20. Negative five. Negative five? Oh, five. Okay, so that means that osmium is five. So it's OS five plus. Simple? Yeah, that, that made it a little easier. What happens if it's a longer compound? <laughs> They're only binary. So that's the nice thing about ionic compounds, they're always going to be binary. Now, covalent compounds aren't always going to be binary. Right. Binary okay. meaning two? Two, elements? yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that when we add that multiplication symbol, that times whatever, when you added the hydrate five to that last example? That's only with water. So oh. that's when you're naming hydrates. So oh. basically, you're letting us know that we've added water to that system to kind of make it easier for us to dissolve it. Okay. Okay, because that messes with weight, right? Because if you have five waters attached to that compound, that's gonna change the weight. That's like if I type water balloons to your leg, aren't you gonna weigh more? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys uh, a moment to digest and then uh, I'm gonna put you guys in groups. You guys have, you'll have, uh, let's see, what time is it? You'll have 15 minutes. At first you had 20, but you'll have 15 minutes to give me your, your solutions. And the group that, that has the most correct um, will get points. Okay. Can I get Edgar in my group? <laughs> no, it's random. Okay, let's see. My Lord. Okay. So these are the five. You guys get it? Still copying it down. One moment, please. Uh, Henry, so are we just doing the, the red section or we're we also doing the. No, you're doing the, the ones at the bottom. So you guys know that this means MGCL2 subscript. Right. It's just that when you type it, it doesn't allow you to do subscript. Magnesium chloride. Let me see if that's right. That's that partially. You just wanted to make it really hard, that's all. Yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> you mean harder than it already is? Oh. My head not hurt. that hard okay so everybody the best way of doing it is just hit that save button and the annotate and then you have it saved under hit app. show in folder annotate save show in finder or right. yeah in finder thank you so in finder boom got it Okay. Okay. Everybody got it? Okay. You guys got 15 minutes? Uh, let's groups. Okay. Why isn't it giving me the option? Break up rooms. There you go. So there's 32 of you guys. Put you guys in groups of five and six. Dr. Henry? Yep. Is the, let's see, is the third one, um, is it CA5 or is it? 
It's C A S. C A S. Oh, okay, thank you. Let's see. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Dr. Henry, and we're naming the compound? You tell me. So the top part, what do you think you're doing? We're gonna put the equation. You're gonna give me the chemical formula, the right? Chemical formula. Okay, and then the bottom half, then you're doing what? Naming it. Naming the compound, okay? Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, so you guys have 15 minutes. I'll see you guys back here in 15. We're back. Woo! We tried. Yeah, we got three of them. Is that good? Did we break it? Is three that more than zero, man. Three more than zero. <laughs> Did we get the points? We got three and we're not even sure they're right. <laughs> if you did not complete it, you automatically qualify for no points. Nice. <laughs> that was a gigantic waste of time. I, I was trying. We were trying very hard. Our group was. You should get, you should get participation points. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want this you to get mad not, at me. This is not PC chemistry. This is chemistry for life. Right? <laughs> Either you're going to sink or you're going to swim, baby. Okay? So let's talk about this. So first off, I don't know what it is about you guys. I get really annoyed about this. You guys have this tendency of throwing out everything that you've learned, everything that you guys see in life. You just throw it in the fucking toilet when you come in this class. You're like, okay, I'm just going to pretend I don't know anything at all. Okay? Pay attention to what we're talking about. Don't tap out. You can't tap out. If you start tapping out right now, you're going to tap out the rest of the semester. It's over. We're semester is going to be going like this, right? From here on out. So I need you guys to sit there and use what you know, right? Use the stuff that you know. Don't, don't teach yourself. Come in prepared. Come in with your periodic table and your ionic, your polyatomic ion sheet. Come in with your brain attached, ready to learn. If you're not coming in that way, you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. That's the first thing. Second thing is, let's talk about sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, what is the chemical symbol for sodium chloride? Sodium NaCl. Okay, so it's NaCl. I know that when I look at that word, sodium chloride, Okay, let's talk about uh, things that we know, carbon dioxide, because we talk about that stuff all the fucking time. Do we not talk about carbon dioxide all the time? Yes. Yes. You've heard it before you came into this class, didn't you? Yes. Okay, and I know that carbon dioxide is CO2, right? Damn, wait a minute. Oh, OX, OX must mean what? Oxygen. Oxygen. I. Oh my gosh, I must be the end of the sentence because I know it's carbon. I know that C stands for carbon, right? Yes. I know that sodium is Na, right? Yes. Oh, that chlor. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, that's just chlorine by itself. So that I, I must mean that that means chlorine by itself, right? Yes. Okay. So those are things that kind of help me figure things out, right? Some of the things that I do know. So when I forget stuff, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Hold on. I know a word that ends with I. Oh, carbon dioxide. Hell yeah. Wait a minute. Let me write that out so I can remember, help myself remember. So if I'm talking about something like nitride, let's go with those terms. Anybody completed? My group. Anybody completed? completed? Yes. hundred. Got all 10? Yes. Okay, can you guys do me a favor and submit your submit your answers in, in the chat to everyone so okay. people don't think I'm cheating? If uh, you did not complete it, don't worry about submitting it. It saves, us, saves me time not looking at it. 
It has okay. been submitted. So before we get into the nitty gritty. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be a, a dick about this. And I'm sorry for being a dick. And if I hurt your feelings, go ahead. You can report me. I don't care. Nomenclature is the bread, is part, is the first bread and butter of chemistry. If you're not getting this, you want us to put in the time to sit there and start getting this. And if you choose that you don't want to get this, right, then maybe you should save yourself the time of getting that bad grade at the end and drop the class. It's not difficult. If you're willing to put in the time, you can learn it. If you're willing to put in the effort, you can learn it. It's not a hard concept. But that means that you're going to have to be willing to put in the time. Every day, you should be sitting on the toilet doing homework problems, not guessing at them, starting to try to look at the, the, the patterns of things, right? Because if we look at patterns of things, we start figuring things out, right? If somebody is pooping on your door one day, and then you notice, okay, so I'm going to start checking my door at a certain time, and they poop on the door again and they poop on the door again. And you notice that at that time, you see this guy walking away from your door. Wouldn't you assume that that guy is pooping on your door? Yes, yes. And you'd go to him and say, why in the hell are you pooping on my door, right? Yes. But you notice the pattern about it, okay? And that gave you that first insight. If we pay attention to those patterns, they'll help us figure things out, right? I can sit there and say things till I'm blue in the face, but you're not gonna get it until you start utilizing it and paying attention to those patterns. Do you guys get that? Yes. Okay, did you submit? Did everybody who's going to submit something submit? Do you guys know how to submit it in the chat? You hit file. Oh, file, okay, I can actually do that. <laughs> I just copy pasted it in one moment. We're not submitting if we didn't finish it, right? If you didn't finish it, don't worry about submitting it. Because then, and you made sure you put everybody's name in there that was part of your group. Uh, I did not. Can my group members put their names in chat, please? We should have got rid of Edgar when we had the chance. You're not supposed to get rid of the smart guy. You're supposed to want to get the smart guy, right? <laughs> I know there was Pedro in my group, uh, and there are three others. Well, I guess they don't want extra credit points. If they don't want extra credit points, I'm not going to sit there and force them to have extra credit points. Sorry, I am not babysitting anymore. That's enough. Enough babysitting. If you guys want this, you're going to get this. If you don't want it, sorry. I can only wrap it up so well and put it in the bow for you. For so long. So did you get your group members? I got two names. I'll go ahead and submit it right now. Okay, so those two people will get so those extra credit points. Cole, can you uh, handle that for me? Yeah. Okay. I can't force the water. I can't I say what is that saying? You can't. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. If you don't want extra credit points added onto your grade. Okay, there's nothing I can do for you. Dang, Dr. Henry, what happened in your group, man? Did you? What do you mean? You came back feisty as hell, man. Your group uh, was the let really me tell you, round. I have been working my ass off. So let, let me give you a little bit of my life this, this last couple of weeks, right? So, of course, I didn't get the spring break because we have two different groups, right? I come back, and you guys come back on spring break, and you pretend like you don't know anything at all. And then that's fine. You know, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I bet. I'm busting my ass to try to get a grant out that, you know, technically we have a grant office to work on. Grant office says, oh, we haven't really done anything except for what you've done, Dr. Henry, in terms of getting everything done. So we're working our asses off to sit there and get a grant out for $1.5 million to give scholarships to students who technically should be in this class or one of my classes, right? And, um, and I'm like, burning the midnight oil to sit there and try to get this done, you know, get the grant done. And there's no guarantee that we'll get the grant. Hopefully we'll get the grant, right? And, um, you know, and it's, a, I think it's a pretty cool ass grant, personally, right? So, of course, I still have grading and stuff to do and everything like that. I still have curriculum stuff to do and all that stuff, right? I'm busting my ass and then I come to class and then, you know, 
I get there and I ask you what sodium chloride is, and people don't want to talk to me about sodium chloride. And I know that they know about sodium chloride because we all know that sodium chloride is salt. But I get a little feisty, and I do get feisty, you know, especially when I haven't slept in a couple of days, haven't been eating right, probably, you know, slowly killing myself, you know, because I want to try to make sure that you guys have the best possible education. And you're going to come to class and act like you don't know anything. Not only that, you're not going to participate. You're not going to talk to each other. When I give you points, a chance to get free points, you don't want to give your name. You know, Giselle, did you get Giselle in your group? Yes. Giselle said she's, she's in your group, right? Yes, I got so it. I know that there's about five or six people that were in each of the, each of the groups and only two of them tell their names. You know, I'm like, man, do you want to pass the class? Somebody's giving you an opportunity for free points. Now you have no competition. You're, I said the ones who would get the most right if you completed it, right? And so, and you don't want to even give your name. Even the people, I would have been like, yeah, it was me too. I wasn't even in the damn group. I didn't feel like I was in the group since I know that two other people are too scared to do it. You know, I'm like, come on. It's like, what else do you want me to do? There's nothing I can do for you if you're not willing. When I'm giving you free stuff, you're not willing to take it? I'm gonna help Tell you, me. Out, Dr. Henry. I'll go ahead and take the points, okay? You, you'll take the points? Yeah, don't worry. Okay, I'll, Nate. I'm gonna help you out, Dr. Henry. I appreciate that, Nate. So put Nate on your paper since those other two people decided they were gonna put their name on. Right? You hear that, Cole? That's a command from the good <laughs> doctor. I got it. I got it. So my point is, is that when people are trying to help you, take that help. That's kind of like somebody is gonna give you free money. Take that free money, right? I don't get that. I guess I just, maybe I grew up differently. Well, let's talk about this, right? And then I'll give you the answers here in a minute. But did I grow up differently? When somebody's trying to help you, do you want to take that help or not? Yes. Yes. So I don't get it. I don't get where you guys are coming from. I don't get why you come in this way, you know? I'm trying to get all the help I can get. Hey man, right? So, That's yeah, for somebody's sure. trying to give me points. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take it. I'm even doing tutoring on the side. Yeah, it's a hustle. Life is a hustle. If you're not willing to work for life, you know, I'm like, hey, it, it is a hustle. I mean, and, and I don't know what it is. I guess are you are you guys independently wealthy? Is, I'm there, not. is that what I, I mean? You guys are all rich? No. Oh no. You know, I'm like, man. Busting my my butt every day. I'm trying to give you guys a good education. I'm trying to make sure that you guys have computers and that you have this and have money so you guys don't have to work if you don't want to work, right? And go to school. I mean, I'm like, I don't know what else I can do. I'm like, man, it just it frustrates me because I'm like, if I had half the opportunities, if my instructors did half the shit that I do for you guys, man. Lord, you know, it's just like, I, I, I don't get it. And then you come to the party and you don't want to even dance, you know? It just, it's frustrating. Me. That's what it is. Then. Sorry, it's just frustrating. Me. And yeah, I guess I shouldn't care so much, right? And thank that's maybe- Thank you so that's much. My, yeah, that's the problem is that I care and it hurts my feelings, man. I want to go at the end of the day, I just want to fuck it, you know? And I get pissed off and, and I'm like, no, I got it. I want to do this. I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I'm here because I want to be here. I can make, let me tell you, I left industry. When I left industry, I was making about 150K, right? If you look at, I, I make good money at doing what I do, but that's because I, I do a big old hustle to try to sit there and get shit done, right? But overall, I could be making a lot more if I stayed in industry. I made a choice to sit there and stay and teach because I like working with students. I want you guys to have better opportunities. Than I have. That's why I'm here. I'm not here for the fucking paycheck because I can make more money outside. I want you to know what it is like to be on the outside, to have some of the experiences that I've had. I've had a lot of great experiences, a lot of different jobs. I've done jobs where I made crap work and I've done crap work and I've done jobs where I'm sitting there on top of the hill, you know? I love what I do today compared to all of those jobs. That's why I'm here. That's why I choose to be here. That's why I choose to do Zoom rather than just putting things on the screen and let you guys read through it. I want you guys to be the best at what you guys do. I want you guys to succeed. 
That's why I do what I do. That's why I do two Zooms a day where I don't have to do that, right? It's because I want you guys to be better than I am. I want you guys to be above me at a point, right? That's what I want to get out of this. That's why I do what I do. But if you choose not to sit there and take advantage of those opportunities, there's only so much I can do for you, right? I can't take the test for you. I can't make you learn the material. I can't prod you, you know, there's laws against that, right? You know, electric shock you. I can't do those things. I would try, but I can't, all right? Okay? And I do it because I want you guys to be a better generation than my generation was. I want you guys to, to accelerate what we've done, to accomplish more than what we've accomplished, and not do stupid shit like raid the capital and stuff like that, or pretend COVID doesn't exist, right? I want you guys to be better than us, to sit there and use the science the way that it should be used, to move our community to the next level, right? So that we can get reach utopia or whatever, and we can all smoke pot all the time and be happy, right? That's why I do what I do, okay? So I want you to do what you do and pass this class with A's. I don't want to give you C's, you know? I, I don't want to give you that C. I want you to earn that A. And I know you guys can do it if you pay attention to those little details, okay? So let's talk about this since I went on a whole fucking spill and I got carried away. So let's talk about the very first one. What is the chemical formula for sodium phosphate? Mm. Na3 PO4. Uh, Na3 Na PO4. Good job. Okay. What about iridium or nitride? IR3 and 4. Good job. What about tungsten, 5, hypo, sulfate, octa, hydrate? Oh, this one is going to be a W2, parentheses. SO2. And then S. SO2. In parentheses said, with a parentheses. 5. OK. Times 8. H2O. Big old dot. Eight H2O. Number four. SR3 parentheses. AS. O five close parentheses two. Okay. Can you go over that one real quick? Sure. And you guys know, any of these that you guys want to go over, you can go over. So we'll go over number four real quick. So we know that if we look on our sheet, arsenic. What is the chemical symbol for arsenic? AS, ASO4. ASO4. We know that it has what charge associated with it? Negative three. Okay. So it says per arsenic. Now, we talked about this on Tuesday. Per. When I use that per, what does that mean? One extra oxygen. So it's hyper. It stands for hyper. So that means that we add an additional oxygen. So that's ASO5. Yeah. Okay, so I know that it has a three charge. I know that strontium has what charge? Two plus 
it has a two plus. So if I want this to balance out to zero, how many stroniums will I need? And then how many per arsenate will I need? Three strontium and two per arsenate. Okay. So that's two, four, six, minus six. So that's zero. So six minus six equals zero. So I'm good. So then I just write my SR three. ASO Five. Two. Okay. Are they, Simple. Yeah, I get. I understand it now. Yeah, and, and, and I say simple. I know sometimes it, it just it takes a minute for it to click. You know, it, it's like putting the pieces together. There are three of these guys that are going to add up to two of those, right? And if we do that math, it helps us out. Okay, and then we know that octa means eight, and then hydrate means water. So octahydrate, okay? So let's see. Yeah, thank you. So the PER, PER means that we add an extra oxygen. So that goes from ASO4 to ASO5. Would you ever have like a PO arsenate? Would it say something no. like- Hy It would be hypo. That means that we drop, right? So the one before it, we know that sulfur, or sulfate is SO4, sulfite is SO3, two minus, and then hyposulfite is SO2, two minus. Okay, so that's why that one's hyposulfite. Would hypersulfite be SO5 two minus? No, mm -hmm. hyper, you would call it per sulfate. So the order is, again, if you look at the roots, so this guy is ATE, so it's sulfate. Uh huh. This guy is sulfite. This guy is hyposulfite. And then SO5, two minus, is going to be per sulfate. So per always goes with the ATE. Why do they not say hyper? Why do they drop that part? Okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth, what I think, right? And it's just what I think. They, they decided to do that, uh, the per, because I think they were on drugs and they said, oh, we're just gonna use pers for hyper, you know, rather than using hyper. And then often we'll use hyper for other things in chemistry. Okay. Right. And so I, I just think, oh yeah, Per, yeah, we're going to use per instead of hyper, you know? <laughs> All right. That makes sense. Okay. So now this is one of those things that we want to pay attention to. Okay. Because you'll notice on your table, occasionally you'll see stuff that says per and eight, like per chlorate. Well, we know that chlorate is three, so, but per chlorate is four, right? Eight. Height, hypoight, right? So we know that hypo always has to have an height associated. And this is one of the things that I catch myself doing still to this, to this day. I will say hyper, uh, hypo sulfate. And I, oh man, I screwed up. You know, they can't go together. It always goes with an height. Okay. But we want to pay attention to those trends. Okay. Because those trends makes the difference between those chemicals. And these guys behave differently. They're gonna have a different reaction, right? How they behave is gonna be quite different, okay? And we'll get more into that when we start talking about acids next. 
And so I'm going to push back your homework uh, a little bit. So next, I'm going to have two homeworks that are going to be due. It's going to be six and seven are going to be due at the end of next week. Okay. Okay. Wait, what's now, at the end of next week? Sorry, I, I didn't catch that. You said six. So six. homework six and seven are going to be due at the end of next week. Okay. That's for Kim 101, right? That's for Kim 101. So I'm going to have to adjust that. Oh, so we'll have more time to work on seven? Yes. Okay. Because I haven't gone over assets and I want to go over assets. And then I also want to go over um, some organic chemistry so that you guys will have a little bit underneath your belt. Okay. But this is what I need from you guys. Okay. And then we'll talk about, yeah. So the few questions, your lab is also going to be pushed back because you guys need that assets and you'll need the organic chemistry to answer. Now you could, you could get ahead of the game and start Google easing and looking at the book and stuff like that, start trying to work it out. And that's what I would recommend. But this is what I'm asking you today, right? I'm asking you because the 23rd is your next exam and that's gonna deal with nomenclature, okay? So it's gonna be important that you guys start picking this up. Nomenclature, if you cannot name the chemicals that you're working with, how in the hell are you gonna be able to administer chemicals that you're working with if you don't know how to name them, okay? Or what they look like. So if they gave you the chemical formula, would you be able to identify the drug, right? So it's important that you guys start doing this. Okay, it's going to be important for your for your progress here on out. Okay, because if you can't do it, you can't set up the chemical equation if you don't know how to name the chemical formulas. We can't put down the chemical formulas, or if you don't know how to name the drugs. Okay, so take it upon yourself to push your education. Right, again, I can only do so much. You know, and the concept of I'm going to give you a pat on the back or, oh, good job for participating or for showing up to class. That's bullshit, right? I need you to do more than show up to class. I need you to come here to participate, to interact, to think, to work, to move forward, to learn. If you're not doing that, you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. This class is so that you guys can learn. I am not here to be hand feed you, you know, to wipe your butts, right? That's your own job. Okay, you guys are now adults, I'm assuming, right? And even if you're not an adult yet, officially, you're an adult because you're taking this class. So I'm gonna treat you like that. Okay? Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So all I that. expect more, not, not all of you, I can see progress. Like Brianna, Brianna is like on fire. She will ask a question in a heartbeat. She may not say it, but it pops up in the chat. She is on fire. When she doesn't understand it, she will slow me down. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Okay, so you're saying this, right? And then there's Nate. Nate constantly is asking questions, which is good because that slows us down. That lets us know. But I also want you start to try to think about that process. What is it that he's trying to say, right? Be willing to take in the knowledge because if you're not willing to take in the knowledge, you're not going to get any knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're smoking before my class, stop smoking pot before my class, okay? Because it's hard to take in knowledge if you're smoking pot before my class. Or if you're drinking three glasses of wine before my class, stop drinking three glasses of wine before my class. Wait till after my class to do that, okay? So you want to make sure that you're taking in, okay? And as well as engaging. And when you're in your groups, if you do not put up somebody Take charge, put up a whiteboard. Every group should have had a whiteboard up. Okay, girl, I'm gonna try one, two, and three. I'm gonna look at my notes and try to get one, two, and three done. You try to do six, seven, eight, and work as a team. The concept of you guys going in groups is not so you sit there and be quiet and not interact. You're supposed to be learning from each other, help each other through the process. Well, didn't he say this? And didn't he say this? You should be discussing it all the fucking time. Speaking of groups, how many of you guys have talked to your groups or even know the members of your groups? I was just going to ask, Dr. Henry, I was going to ask, can we get an updated roster so we know? Because yes, I'm going to start deleting everybody today. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, I shouldn't say everybody. I'm going to delete all the people that are no longer <laughs> there today. Because we went from like 100 people down to like 30. So I'm pretty sure a lot of our groups got. Yeah. And then you also have technically, 
technically you guys still uh Parnell still has 80 86 people technically right that haven't dropped that haven't dropped yes oh they just There's don't technically 86 people but they choose not to show up right and then they wonder why they're getting 18s and 10s and 9s on exams how many right? people are in this class between both schools um, between both schools, there's 140, roughly, well, 140, not 140 anymore. There was 140. But, but only 30 people be showing up to class? Yeah, 30 people shows up to this one. And then there's also the evening class. And I have about 25 to 30 that shows up to that. Oh, so okay. half the students that show up, half of them don't show up. I got you. Yeah, I don't understand how you could even remotely understand it without showing up to these. I show these up to the class and I still don't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, some of them that. actually some of the people will actually look at the videos because i can keep track of how many people access the videos and stuff like that but it's very few and right. so a lot of people are are hoping are hoping and praying that you know either i die from COVID so that they pass this class or <laughs> they'll be dropping it in a week or two. yeah that's what that's wild man i couldn't imagine trying to do these tests without being in class yeah you know, and, and the thing is, is that chemistry is hard in general, right? Chemistry online is like, it's insane. It's insane for me. And I know it's insane for you guys, right? Because I know that you guys have those distractions. I have the same, you guys have the same distractions that I have. I have, you know, my girlfriend knocking at the door to give me food. I have, you know, delivery guys and, and constructions going on outside. And I have, you know, everybody wants to get in contact with me when I'm in class, you know, trying to give you guys knowledge and stuff like that so there's all of these things that are going on constantly i just you know we get overwhelmed and we're like oh you know we get crazy right and so it's hard to stay focused or i have a i have a few students that i know for a fact during my lectures they're playing god of war or they're playing you know they're on their playstation call of duty fire, or, though. or Fortnite, or you know and so and and then they wonder what can I do to pass this class? Well, you've already fucked yourself, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you know, it's like, it, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard because you also have all your kids there, right? And and my language sometimes gets bad. I get fussy and stuff like that. I need to work on, right? I'm not used to having kids around unless they're high schoolers coming in to take college classes, staying in the college class. And so I, I, it's, again, it's new for me as well, too, having the, sit there and hone my my verbiage down you know so um my dad was a sailor my mom was a, a nurse and so some of the things that came out of my mouth come from my family you know so and I'm proud because they were hard-working people and um my point my point being is it's hard and, and learning is hard in general but learning online is so much harder because you have so many more distractions so that means that we have to put in extra work to try to get there. That also means that we have to put in time to try to get there. And that's alone time, and that's also group time. Get your groups. I keep telling you guys, get those groups. That's the reason why I put you guys in groups. Okay? It, it's, in, it's crucial that you guys start doing that because that is going to get you over the finish line. First thing that you should do in every class, find your, find your people. Okay? Find the people that you relate to that you can work with that you know you guys it, it's about a struggle we're, we're going through a struggle right now we are going through a hell of a struggle right but the way that we get through the struggle is utilizing all of our resources you guys are resources for each other right you guys get that you guys understand like Brittany's there right Brittany was in where were you at Brittany last week or the week before are you there Brittany or did she dip Well, I see her tonight. Probably see her tonight. Brittany was here earlier. Okay. Brittany was in in Florida at a trial, right? Brittany was chiming in in Florida from a trial. Her daughter was sitting there in the other room because she had to bring her daughter because the childcare fell through, right? Now, if we can sit there and go through that and find ways to sit there and find the time to learn the material, and pick up the material, that means that we all can technically do that. And we can all help each other through that process. You know? So again, 
I can only do so much. You guys are going to have to start meeting me halfway. Actually, you have to be more than halfway now because now I'm mad. Okay. So are we are we kind of clear? You guys get where I'm coming from on this? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and yes. don't get me wrong. I admire some of you guys. Some of the things that you guys are doing and that you guys are accomplishing. I mean, I see Angie there and I see Angie's little daughter running around half the time. Angie is like, I'm hitting tutors. I'm just, I mean, she is working her butt off, right? And, and so I admire the fact that you guys are doing these things. It isn't easy. And then, then I also get mad at the ones that are like, uh, well, I expect you to do this. And I expect, can you open this for me? Why the hell did you do it two weeks ago when it was supposed to be done, right? I get pissed off. That makes me mad because I'm like, Dude, really, I'm like, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you help yourself, right? And so I need you guys to give me more. I want more, okay? Angie, I still want more. I'm gonna I know. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay. That's all, see, and that's all I want you guys to do. Give me, give me 110%. I'll probably be at your next lecture again. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's good. And she does, she comes to both of them, you know? So... Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go because I'm well over, I'm at 15 minutes over. I, my last year got all fucked up, but that's okay. We'll get <laughs> back to it next, next week and come in ready, right? Come in ready, don't be scared. You guys gotta talk. And if you don't know it, the only way that you're ever gonna learn it is by trying. You can't just sit there and just, you can't sleep on the book and learn it. Right? You gotta open up the book and start reading. Look at the lectures, go back over the, because every lecture is posted. There is no reason that I should have to say things 25 million times because you can look back and see it, okay? Look at it and start trying to pay attention to those patterns because that's gonna help you understand a lot of it, okay? That's right, give me more, I want more. I do, I want more from you guys, okay? Okay, so get started on that homework. Do not wait to the last minute, okay? Because you wait to the last minute, that is 100, was it how many, Nate? Was it 136? 109. 109, I may add 30 more, just in case. Plus 50 okay. for the uh, lab, so don't forget. Yep, I gave you a whole bunch of problems, right? So you guys should be able to name everything, right? Yeah. Okay. I've been okay, working, but it's a lot. Get get started. Get started now. Don't waste your time. You know, make sure you're doing at least a little bit every day. And go back over it. You know, because it does no good if you don't remember, right? The only okay. problem on the homework it gives like three tries, and I'll I'll really think I have something, and I'll submit it, and then it turns red, and I I don't know what it was. We'll give you guys a few more tries. Uh, okay. It should technically be five, but. I'll give you a couple more, so. Yeah, because each one's like three tries and I'll do an equation, I'll put it in. I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? So I okay, so yeah, when I go make that adjustment, I'll go do that right now because otherwise I'll forget old age, you know, getting gray hairs. You guys are giving me gray hairs like hell. I had no gray hairs. But fucking teaching hair. online, excuse my language, teaching online has really made me turn gray. <laughs> Dr. Heiner, are you still doing office hours today? Yeah. Or is it only okay. Tuesday? Okay. So. I'm sorry. I said I'll meet you. I'll meet. I'll meet whoever wants to go to office hours and office hours. I'll let the rest of you guys go. See you guys next week. Come in prepared.